What is going on guys? In this video, I want to share with you five beginner gardening mistakes that I made when I first started so that way you can have a more successful garden and not end up with something like this. So the first mistake I want to talk about would be watering. Now we know watering your plants is essential for them to grow. How much watering is the problem? Not enough watering would kill your plant. Too much watering would also kill your plant as you run the risk of having root rot depending on your drainage. When I started gardening, anytime I saw the top layer look a little bit dry, I would take the hose out and start watering right away, rather than checking the soil itself. That was a huge mistake for me and that killed a lot of my plants actually. So the way you can avoid that mistake is doing the finger test. Just put your finger into the dirt about two knuckles deep, feel the soil. If it is dry, then give it a watering. If it's moist, then it's good to go. Leave it alone, you know? But the first mistake being watering, the second mistake actually goes hand in hand with it and that would be pruning your plant properly. And my tomato plant is actually a prime example of why you should prune your plant. And what do I mean by pruning your plant? That would be cutting the leaves at the bottom of your plant close to the soil. So that way when you do water your plant, the dirt does not splash onto the leaves because that will cause it to get a disease. You can, you can tell by looking at this uh, cherry tomato that it looks like a skeleton. I had to cut off a lot of the stems because it was getting so much disease. Now, the way to prevent this would be add a layer of mulch on top of your dirt, prune the bottom leaves so that way when you do water, the dirt does not splash onto the plant as much and that will prevent it from getting a disease. Before, I thought it was dying, but after I resolved the mistakes, it started producing fruits. So that's a very exciting improvement for me. The third mistake I made when I started gardening was not giving my plant enough space for it to grow so enough dirt basically i have two perfect examples to show you on what happens when you give your plant enough space versus not enough space the first example would be my tomato plant there's not enough space for it to develop a proper root structure for it to provide itself with enough nutrients to grow big so because this pot is so small this plant stays small with it so you're actually stunting the growth of your plant um, whereas you can see the cherry tomatoes i have and everything with the bigger pot is able to grow a lot bigger. The second example would be my peppers. Um, recently, I did a lunchbox pepper harvest, and you look over here, this plant right here, the pot is not very deep. And because of that, I only had one pepper, and that is due to the plant not getting enough nutrients to grow properly. Beside that pepper plant was actually this plant right here. I took this bell pepper plant, took it out of that little space, put it into the bigger pot, and now it's actually growing a lot better. Um, it's actually producing me some bigger fruits, more than one actually. So depending on what type of plants you wanna grow, just make sure that you check out what type of root system it has, how deep of a pot you need to buy, if you plan on growing it in a pot, or if you plan on growing it in the ground. Now, if you are growing it in the ground, you don't have to worry about that as much, but if you are growing it in a pot, make sure you get a big enough pot for it. The fourth mistake I wanna go over would be giving your plant sufficient airflow or air circulation. So previously, I had a greenhouse where I would put all these plants inside. I thought it would be cool to have a greenhouse. But it turns out having that limited airflow, the wind and everything, it actually caused my plants to not produce any fruits. And that's because some fruits require that wind to self-pollinate, like cherry tomatoes, for example. The flowers on a cherry tomato plant can self-pollinate because it has both the female part and the male part. All it takes is a little bit of wind and it will actually pollinate. When I kept these plants inside the greenhouse, there was no wind, so it would never produce any fruits. After Mother Nature destroyed my greenhouse, I took all my plants, brought it out again, and what do you know? It started producing fruits. Now the last mistake I want to share with you guys would be not having any type of flowers in the garden. Having flowers is very essential to your garden because it attracts pollinators, and like the name says, it pollinates your plants for you. So it definitely won't hurt to go grab a couple of flowers and make your garden a little more colorful. So those are my five beginner gardening mistakes that I made when I first started. If you found the video useful, please leave a like, comment below on what else you'd like to see, and remember, take it easy.